Hey guys, today's a video of top three in each category. I saw someone recommend this in a comment and I screenshotted the comment and I was like, okay, I need to do it. So I started planning things out and it was actually not as difficult as I thought it would be. I definitely have like a few solid favorites in every category that I could just not get rid of. And then a few I had to like keep on switching out and changing out, but I'm, I think I'm pretty content with this video so far, like with this plan so far. Some of these are very like new favorite finds, but I was like just so madly in love with them that I was like, okay, you have to be part of this video. So my social media links will be in the description along with my drama channel, anything else you might need to find. And let's just get into it, okay? So a few of these I don't have, which is very weird to say considering these are supposed to be my favorites, but I've definitely finished a few of my favorite products and I haven't repurchased them due to one, being on a no buy this month and two, trying to finish off my project pan items before buying new stuff or repeats of stuff that I already know that I love uh, so I focus on other things so some of these I don't have on me right now but they're still my favorites okay and I will repurchase them as soon as humanely possible milk hydro grip is one of those it's an amazing primer I've had a travel size of it that I tried on holiday and then I bought a full size of it and it's just one of the best if not the best primer of all time oh these also are not going to be like position one two three they're all on an even playing field unless I state otherwise. So they're not kind of like numbered or ranked. They're just like, these are my top three, not ranked, just they are. Uh, but Milk Hydro Grip probably takes the edge, probably takes the cake for the best primer of all time. It just hydrates it, but it hydrates in like a good way, but it also makes your base sticky. It makes your makeup last ages. I just, I just think it's a good primer, okay? It's an amazing primer. now. For more blurring slash mattifying, I love the ColourPop No Filter. I've actually used up a solid amount of this and I didn't have it for that long. It's down to here. So I really went through this very quickly. It does very minimal, gentle blurring. It's almost just like a, a smidge of a blur. It's just so natural looking, so beautiful. It mattifies just enough, but it's not like drying. It just does wonderful things. No filter because it creates just, yeah, it just creates the most perfect filter over your face. And then the last one is, I also tried to do a mixture of more affordable slash high-end products. I feel like I did a good, good enough job doing that. But sometimes, you know what? I just had three high-end favorites and I couldn't switch one out. The Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. You can use this as a primer, you can use it as a foundation, you can use this as a highlight, but I put it under the section of primers i like using this underneath kind of like concealer or underneath foundation sometimes i do use this on its own but i think it's a good good mix of everything so i just put it under here because that's the one that i was like ah oh, i have three foundations i have three highlights so i'm just going to put this under primer but it could really go under any of these categories i just think it's really nice it's dewy it adds a slight coverage not too much a slight tint makes you just look so filtered and so beautiful and so naturally just like mm, like i woke up like this i'm just so stunning like this you know we love those kind of products. They're great. Top three foundations. You guys probably know all of these, so I'll just get into it very quickly. My affordable pick is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. I love this thing to death. I use this a lot, and then I just, you know, I went through my project pan, so I'm using older products right now, but I'm, I'm excited to come back to this. It's a very good, solid, full coverage foundation that looks natural on the skin. It just looks good. It never fails me and it's super affordable. So I just think this is a, an amazing pick if you guys are gonna take anything away from this video. A very good foundation. This one is also not a shock to anyone that watches my channel. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Foundation stays all day and night. I agree. This is unbeatable when it comes to just the, the wear on your face. It just stays on for so long. It perfects, it blurs, it fills in what it needs to fill in without settling into fine lines or pores. I just think this is an amazing, amazing foundation with an amazing finish. Just looks so good. It looks skin-like, but it looks like porcelain skin. It looks like you are carved from marble. I'm very, I'm very poetic today. No, this is just an amazing foundation. It makes you look literally like stone, but like really good, pretty stone. Just smooth. Then we have my all-time favorite, like I think this is just like a given, the glossy skin tint. I try to also give like a variety of different products because like some people don't like matte, some people don't like, you know, I feel like I have a good range of things. Glossy skin tint. I've bought too many of these to even count at this point. I use these constantly. I use these, sometimes I use them every day. Sometimes I use them just when I'm running errands. It just depends on my feeling vibe that day, but I just love these and I go through them like water because they are actually quite literally the consistency of water, but they're just incredible. Concealer. I have three, of course, because it's the top three of categories. Glossy Stretch Concealer, emollient, non-drying, looks like skin, blends away. You can 
it blends into a wonderful like seamless finish you can powder it you can not powder it it looks natural you can make it look a little more full coverage i think this is amazing for spot concealing under the eyes anything you need to do this concealer is probably my favorite concealer of all time uh once again like usually i don't have a preference for ranking this is definitely like the best concealer i've ever tried so that's that on that then we have the charlotte tilbury magic away concealer really nice a more medium coverage very natural finish kind of satiny i just think it's a really good for very good concealer and then the pat mcgrath labs concealer super good looks skin like you can use it to spot conceal you can use it under your eyes you can set it you can not set it it's just a very very good concealer i fell in love with it the moment i used it for the first time and i've been in love with it since i think this is my second bottle i used the first one up completely in my project pan actually that you guys watched me finish powder very important to get it right where is my powder <laughs> i have such a mess on my bed right now so i don't have one of the powders which is fine uh so the powder the loose powder that is my absolute most favorite powder is the wilder from glossier it is un what's it called like you can't see it on the skin you put it on and it blurs and it looks stunning you can't see it it's super lightweight it sets just enough but it doesn't leave like a cast behind it doesn't leave a powderiness behind it is an amazing loose powder and i can't wait to buy it again um but i have too many loose powders right now but i genuinely cannot wait to have that powder again for my kind of like pressed setting powder the pat mcgrath labs under eye setting powder i use this not just under the eyes i kind of use it everywhere it blurs like nothing in this world like your pores will just disappear i bought this literally like a month ago and i'm already like basically almost finished with it i think it comes in like three or four shades it's stunning also as a touch-up powder it is unbeatable i think there is nothing that touches up the way this powder does it just makes me look flawless every time i touch up it's great it's incredible it's amazing and then the last one is the hourglass ambient lighting powder i have ethereal light but dim light also works for me they have a bunch of different shades of this it's just a super lightweight baked formula that just adds like a luminosity to your face so you use it and then you can like set it with other powders and then you can put this as your last powder or even on top of your bronzer and blush to kind of like blend everything together and make your face have life again and that's exactly what it does it's really good that's that on that oh somehow i have another powder so we'll just do top four powders okay guys let's just break the rules for this one the charlotte tilbury flawless finish powder i don't know how i forgot about this that's embarrassing anyway we'll have four i'm breaking the rules of my own game this is one that is unused i have one that i've hit pan on this is the best setting powder that i've ever tried when it comes to like coveragey powders so this one is basically translucent essentially this one also has no color but this one adds pigment it makes you look smooth it makes you look airbrushed i just think all of these powders are incredible and i needed all of them in this ranking for you guys okay so then we have bronzes this is difficult i don't actually have too many favorite bronzes i'm gonna be honest with you guys it's not a category that i'm very passionate about so uh for bronzers i think powder wise hourglass makes really good bronzers once again their powders are just great but not okay so there's, there's, there's there was this quad that they released that bronzer was not good the marbled ones are incredible they blend like a dream they make they just look seamless they look stunning you can buy them as singles you can buy them as travel sizes or you can buy them in these palettes don't get the quads the quads have lower quality products i don't know why but these six pans always have the marbled ones and they're the good ones and i love these bronzers i don't think you can go wrong with them you can literally not overdo it like they just look stunning doesn't matter how much you put on then we have a recent find i tried this nabla bronzer this is in the shade amber and i tried it i actually gave it a second chance you'll be seeing that video sometime soon i did like a giving fails a second chance and when i tried this for the first time i wasn't obsessed with it i wasn't obsessed with any of these powders like powder products but that's because i tried them on complexion that i didn't like and then i tried them again on foundations that i did like and i love it this is one of my favorite bronzers currently like i just love it i think it looks incredible my bronzer hasn't looked that good in a while and i just am obsessed with it so this has quickly become one of my favorites now another one is the why am i announcing it like it's a boxing match the next one up is the charlotte silver contour wand i know it's not technically a bronzer but i kind of i use them interchangeably i use them kind of together like bronzer contour same stuff to me personally the contour wand easy contour in fair medium blends like a dream is incredible looks stunning natural color i just think these are chef's kiss beautiful so you have variety there you have baked you have pressed you have no you have two baked actually two baked one cream 
that's good. Then we have blush. So for the first one, I have cloud paints in any of the colors. I'm not saying any colors in specifics. So obviously everyone has a different skin tone, different preference. So it's not the colors that I like necessarily. It's the formula. Cloud paint, my favorite is Bean, but I like all of them. I like Dusk and then there's another one, like the Barbie pink one. Anyway, I think these are great for an everyday look. I think so far these are still my favorite cream blushes. I've tried a lot. I love a lot. But this one is definitely my favorite formula. It's just super versatile. It's pigmented, but you can also make it lightweight. It's not dewy, but it's not, you know, matte. It's just like the perfect in between. Then we have actually a surprising one. I haven't spoken about this in a while because it's not in my project pan, but it will be soon. The Becca Mineral Blush. I have it in the shade Flower Child, but you know, once again, anything will do. Incredible formula. Incredible formula. It blends beautifully. It shines beautifully. It makes you look dewy. It's pigmented enough, but it also blends like i said look at this shade it's like a goldy peachy pink i think this is an underrated blush then a new find and like i said i have put new products into this because when i try a product i that i love i know that i love it so i don't need to try it a thousand times before i can tell you guys that i love the product this pat mccraft labs recent blush release i know these are expensive i do know these are expensive but also have i ever tried a better formula of blush no I don't think I've ever, ever tried a better blush formula than this formula right here. This is in the shade Divine Rose. Yeah, one, like one, this like embossing is stunning. But two, this formula is incredible. Every time I have used it, even though I've been trying to pan different products, every time I've used this, I've looked in the mirror and said, I've never had a better blush day than today. That's how much I love this. And this shade as well, super beautiful. Anyway, that's that one. That's that review on that. Highlight, one of my favorite things in the world. This one was very difficult for me. A runner-up, I'll do like with the powders, you know, a runner-up is the Fenty Diamond Bomb, but I'm not gonna put it in this one because it's a controversial product. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. It's a love or hate. It's kind of like Marmite. Diamond Bomb, I love it. It makes me feel sparkly, dewy, and amazing, even though it's basically pressed glitter. This ranking is going to be more versatile highlights for kind of like everyone to enjoy. You're a Trip by Colourpop. It's the Super Shock highlight. Now, once again, you can get any shade you want, but this is my personal favorite. I've hit pan on it right there, as you can see the dip. It's just an amazing formula. Like this looks like skin. It's not as problematic as cream, but it's not as powdery as powder. It looks like skin. It blows my mind every single time. You can use it on wet, you can use it on like set skin and it's just a really good solid highlight that i know i can i dug my nail into it yep that i know i can rely on so whenever i'm feeling like oh i don't know what to do i'll just do this one it's it's good then we have any of the becca highlights the shimmering skin perfecter this is in champagne pop and this is the unused one i have a small champ champagne pop that i've been using but i've tried many of the becca shades and they're all amazing this formula is just really magical it's like powdery and it's very powdery but it also never looks like powder on the skin it looks like you're just glowing from within and i just think it's an amazing formula and i'm sad to see becca go so if you can stock up stock up because they'll be gone and the last one is a newer find it's what i'm wearing on my skin today look at that just as proof of how amazing it is i tried this in that same video that i tried the nabla bronzer in trying fails again this is the skin glazing glass skin finish glow powder in ozone and it's a highlighter and it's amazing. I've used it a couple of times now that so that the Nabla thing is gone now, basically in the middle. I love this. I don't know why I ever said I didn't like it because I love it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's one of my favorite highlights of all time. It's definitely like on the list of if I was only able to keep one product from each category, this might make the cut. I feel like this would be the one. It's just, look at it. It doesn't look powdery at all. There is no even inkling of powder on my skin. It's amazing. Then we have setting sprays. I don't have any of the ones that I'm talking about. Oh, I have one. The Glow Recipe Ultra Fine Mist. This is technically not a setting spray for like makeup. This is a facial spray. Like you can just spray on your skin. But I use this throughout the day to rehydrate my skin, add some life back into it. And it's just the most fine, beautiful mist. Wonderful smell. I love this. I bought multiple of these now. I just think they're really good. And then the other ones that I have are the Charlotte Tilbury long wearing setting spray. Nothing makes my makeup last as long as that setting spray. You could basically put makeup on, spray that spray, live your life, go to sleep, live your life, go to sleep, and your makeup would probably still look wearable. And then the last one is Fenty What It Do. Once again, do we highlight, but the mist is so fine and so beautiful that it's just like angel 
kisses <laughs> angel kisses yes that's the one just a great setting spray you guys know this i know this eyeshadow this was difficult this was more difficult than the highlight thing to do i'm like having to step back and think like am i actually making the right decision here i don't know but i'm just gonna go for it and say my piece and then you know regret it later so i've picked three that look kind of similar in shade selection but I think this is more about the formula of these rather than the shades of these, okay? So, oh, this is difficult. The Too Faced Born This Way, The Natural Nudes. I have never had a bad eye look using this palette and that speaks volumes. This is something I would travel with. This is something that I would use daily if I needed to. You have, I have a setting color and then I have a deepening color or slash an eyeliner. I like to do powder eyeliner or a pencil eyeliner. I don't like doing liquid liners. They irritate me, they frustrate me, they infuriate me, quite frankly. I have some transition shades, some deepening shades, and then you have a shimmer shade to go with each of the mattes. But not only do you have brown mattes, you also have pink mattes. So you can either swing more pink here, more brown, pink again, brown. This is perfect. This is perfect. And the formula on this is actually really good. So Too Faced has made some bad formulas before they've had bad formulas i recently put one in fails it was the something rich palette awful formula one of the worst i've ever tried if not the worst but they've also made some of the best formulas this is it this is the good formula this is amazing if you can pick this up pick this up i think it's so versatile so stunning so beautiful you can basically use this daily if you buy this you can basically not have any other eyeshadow palette and get by that's the first pick I might actually be traveling with this once I go back to traveling. I think this is the one palette that I could take and feel comfortable taking and using. And it's also cardboard and super skinny. So I feel like I would feel just really good taking this with me and calling it a day. So that's beautiful. One palette I don't want to travel with. The Natasha Denona bronze palette. One, it's just like, it's bigger, but it's also like a price possession where I'm like, I don't want you to get cracked, lost or damaged in any way. So I would not travel with this, okay? But... Do I love this formula? Absolutely. Now, I also really like the glam palette, which is the cool toned version of this, but I feel like I use the glam less than the bronze, which means I had to put the bronze in here. I just feel like it's a good everyday palette. You get one of her like cream to powder, powder to cream shades, uh, which is a black, which I think was a great choice for a black shade because it doesn't fall out on the face. I use it as an eyeliner. You have some of these really interesting mattes. You have some transition shades, and then you have a bunch of different shimmers. You have like some orangey ones, some brown ones. A pink to gold here which just looks stunning you even have like a grayish purple which i think is just a great pop of color i love this palette okay the formula is really good i think all natasha denona palettes are really good that i've tried so far but this one is the one that i would take then we have pat mcgrath could i have made this video without putting in a pat mcgrath palette absolutely not i think all of the pat mcgrath palettes could make this list it just depends on what you want i had to dial it i had to you know narrow it down to one palette but actually if they gave me any like if i had to close my eyes and pick one and then keep that on for the rest of my life i would be happy probably this is the mothership five palette and it's the first one that i ever bought uh this was my first pat mcgrath palette this is my introduction to pat mcgrath and i loved it and it's what made me buy ten thousand more eyeshadow palettes from pat mcgrath so you have an inner corner brow bone highlight which is like a very smooth just regular shimmer shade but stunning you have one two three mattes two of those same shimmers as this one but you can actually use these in the crease as well it's super versatile and then you get four of these special shades you get red you get pink you get like this green to pink reflex and this white to yellow gold reflex this pink i used like no other pink in my collection i remember using this daily to the point where it has a dip in the pink this is my favorite pink eyeshadow of all time i would be happy with just keeping this palette so that's my pick of top three eyeshadow palettes i guess that i would pick they're all high end which i'm very sorry about but they're just my price possessions and if i could only pick three i would pick these three then we have brows this was very difficult because i use brow pencils brow gels and stuff like that so i didn't really have like a so i'll just say like basically brands first brand that i'd pick for my brows is charlotte tilbury this is a very difficult category for me to even figure out because like i use so many different products anyway Charlotte Tilbury, her pencils are great and her brow gels are great. Second one, e.l.f. This e.l.f. pencil is amazing. It's incredible. It feels high-end. It looks high-end. Well, it doesn't feel high-end, but as in it feels high-end when you're applying it and when you have it on your face. Very good pencil. And the last one is Glossier. The boy brow could get me through anything. If I could only use the boy brow for the rest of my life, I would. And that's my opinion on brows. They're not even that interesting. I'm not even that in love with doing my brows. 
so this category was kind of meh to me. I didn't even think about it that much. Let's just move on. Mascara. Huda Beauty, the double-ended one. Incredible, beautiful, and makes my eyelashes look like they're fake, like false lashes. Uh, you get the volume side, you get the curling length side, use both. Just a really good mascara. I finished it recently. Um, it like dried up on me and it started like crumbling down my face, so I put it into my empties. Two, the Pat McGrath Fetishize Mascara. I still haven't tried the other one. I have it in my collection, but this is the one I really love. And yeah, this just adds volume, adds length. It's beautiful on first application, second application. It's just really good. And then the last one is the Glossier Lash Slick. I can't find it right now. The Glossier Lash Slick for those natural days where I don't want it to look like I'm wearing mascara, but I actually am wearing mascara. Lip liners. Okay, I actually have specific shades because I find that my lip liner collection is basically just like four different brands. So I just picked specific eyeliners that I use on a regular basis that I think are just my favorites. So recently Colourpop released a collection of Barbie and they released one of those lip liners in the shade Golden Beach, which is like a cool toned pinky shade, one of those. This is one of my favorite lip liners, if not my favorite lip liner of all time, because it just goes with any lip looker that I do, even if I just do lip liner and lip gloss, it just looks like my lips were better. Then Kylie Forever and Always. I went through one of these already. I finished a whole lip liner and this is my second lip liner that I'm also on the way to finishing. Kylie's kind of like not existing right now. I think they're releasing stuff in July. So maybe these will come back if they don't pick one up. I don't know, or don't, do whatever you want. This is that one. You can apply it lightly or you can apply it stronger. And it's also like a my lips but better kind of a shade. I feel like it goes with every lip look, lip colour. And then Colourpop Minute Man. I haven't seen this on the website anymore. I'm so sorry guys. I got this in like a vault and then I couldn't find it on the website, but it's this shade here. An amazing lip liner. Looks so good under lip gloss. I can't find it on the website. So good luck with that one. But anyway, these are my favourite lip liners. I can't pick anything else because these are my favourite ones. These are the only ones I pretty much use. Then we get lipsticks. This was very easy for me. One, Charlotte Tilbury matte revolution in very victoria the most perfect nude for me personally this is what it looks like it's like a comfortable matte formula look at this shade this speaks this just is angelica in a bullet just the most perfect lipstick i love it i could wear it for the rest of my life i could literally if i could only pick one lipstick for the rest of my life this would be it and i would not even cry about it i would throw away the rest of my collection then the next one i already said on on screen it colourpop just a tint in the shade gimme small let me just apply it here it's basically, it looks like very Victoria, just shiny. Can we see a pattern, a trend in lips? Anyway, I love this. It looks like lipstick and lip gloss in one. You can reapply it throughout the day. Moisturizing, nourishing, really good. I love these. I love these just the tints from Colourpop. And the last one is kind of like a, I thought I'd throw in a red lipstick. So I feel like red is good. For some occasions, like I feel like sometimes I really do want to wear a red. And this is my favourite red lipstick of all time. I've never found a better red lipstick. It's the Hourglass Vegan Red Lipstick. And that's why I'm picking it as well. It's vegan. It's the only true red vegan lipstick that has ever come out. It's in the shade... Well, I can't find the shade for you guys. It's just the red lipstick with a little bug on it. And it's... Oh! It's called Red Zero, Red O, something like that. Look at it. One swipe. Touch down. Swipe. Look at it beautiful it's not matte it's kind of like a cream formula but i think it's just really good it looks amazing i loved wearing it and that is my pick for favorite lipsticks of all time the ones that i would keep if i could only pick three lip glosses this was very easy as well i did not struggle colourpop so juicy any of the shades pick whichever one you want except for the lizzie mcguire collection that one is a little disappointing they're kind of translucent look the same on the lips and they have weird chunky glitter in it any of these opaque ones amazing plumping kind of thick but i kind of like that and they look like glass on lips the one i'm wearing today is the fenty glass bomb glass gloss bomb <laughs> not glass bomb in the shade this one's sweet mouth pick any it like fills in your lines on the lips and blurs your lips it makes them look like you've got filler kind of like the effect of filler of like filling in the the lines and then the last one is the charlotte tilbury bejeweled lips this one's in an opal magic pick any they're just super good. They look amazing on the lips. Super like glossy and glass-like, but not thick. And that's that. And I think we're at the end of our video. So let me know your top three. Uh, let me know which ones you agree with, which ones you don't agree with. Let me know anything in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit that bell. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.